At seven minutes past eight, our top story this morning and is an oil field near Hawley about to become one of the most successful in the country. We produced almost five million litres, that's about 29,000 barrels of oil. It's uh, looking very good. Over the past six months, tests at Horse Hill have produced nearly 30,000 barrels of oil. Now the company which owns the site, UK Oil & Gas, wants to drill up to four new wells and extract oil for the next 20 years. With more, here's BBC Surrey's Jack Feen. It's here at Horse Hill that UK Oil & Gas is carrying out oil exploration, just three miles from Gatwick Airport. The firm has been operating since December 2013. A large crane is one of the first things you see as you come on the site. There's also industrial machines and tractor-like vehicles, as well as cars, porter cabins and fencing. Security here is tight. The company believes there's a large amount of oil that can be extracted from this area. In 2015, they told the BBC there were up to 100 billion barrels. At the moment, they have two wells, but the aim is to have as many as six by 2020. They've now submitted applications to get all the permissions they need and hope to have these in place by autumn of this year. James has been speaking to the Chief Executive of UK Oil & Gas, Stephen Sanderson. Well, we put in a planning application for up to seven wells. We have planning permission to drill another two horizontal wells, which we uh, will be doing around April time. And from then on, after hopefully we get the planning consent in the autumn, we'll be looking to drill another two wells in early 2020 for the Portland and then perhaps another one in the Kimmeridge. So what's actually happening there right now at this moment? Uh, the, uh, this moment right now we're actually just doing a little bit of routine maintenance on the well itself. We have been producing oil here s for about six months. We've produced almost five million litres, that's about 29,000 barrels of oil. It's uh, looking very good which is why we put the planning application in to uh, seek to put it into full-time production. Now I'm no oil man you say that sounds pretty good so far. How much oil do you think there is at Horse Hill? Well, put it this way, the, the targets we have for these next wells are about 1,000 barrels per day, which is uh, the, using a horizontal well, and they give you three times uh, a vertical well. If we get to that 1,000 barrels a day, that will make Horse Hill the, the second largest oil producing field in the onshore UK. And clearly we're looking to drill multiple wells, so, uh, you know, several thousand. And it will also put UCOG into uh, the top three oil producers in the onshore UK. So it's, it's a significant field. Can we clarify, though, because many people hear oil and they start thinking about fracking. Can you categorically rule out any fracking ever, whatsoever? Yeah, we, uh, we've categorically ruled that out for a long time. We don't need to frack here. You know, we have very good flow rates from the natural state of the rock, so there's absolutely no need. Plus, we can't because our, our formations are shallower than the 1,000-metre ceiling for fracking. So we don't need to, basically, because Mother Nature has already done it for us. Tell us about the area and what you've done to consult with residents. Well, I'm standing right next to what we call our uh, viewing tower here, which is sort of like a poor man's grandstand, perhaps. So we've had about two or three groups of local residents into the site. We've uh, shown them everything that we're doing. We've answered their questions. We have a lot of engagement locally. We're primarily concerned, of course, with the people that live immediately around the site. I think they've gone away um, quite happy, but you'd have to uh, ask them what they feel. But uh, generally, UCOG has taken quite a lead in the industry for engaging with the local community. Well, that's Stephen Sanderson from UK Oil & Gas. Let's speak now to Keith Taylor, who's a Green Party MEP representing residents in Surrey. Good morning, Keith. Hello. You're not happy about these plans? Well, I don't think anybody in their right mind, if they didn't own shares in UK Oil & Gas, would be happy about these plans. What's your problem? Well, my problem is that um, it's something that we don't need. It's something that, uh, in the light of our climate change challenge, um, is highly dangerous and is actually, uh, it, this is an exercise in a profit and loss account uh, for the oil company. Um, you know, the, the, the fact that we're going to endanger um, uh, groundwater uh, pollution 
um, air uh, pollution. Uh, we're going to have more traffic on the uh, in the narrow lanes around the site. Um, I, I can't see there's anything to like about what's going on here. And certainly, uh, I attended a, f um, a film screening last week in um, in Surrey, uh, and people were were were, were, were very concerned, uh, shall we say, about the possible impacts from this uh, operation. Well, oil and production has, has been going on for, for decades in the UK. What evidence have you got to demonstrate that it is dangerous? Well, the, you know, if you listen to the, 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 the climate change scientists, uh, they're saying that really the safest place to keep fossil fuels is where they are already, underground. Um, you know, and the fact that Mr. Sanderson says there's no fracking um, completely ignores the fact there will be acid stimulation because uh, it's unlikely that the rock will yield up its oil without the use of um, uh, injection of acids, uh, which, uh, you know, there hasn't been any work done on in the environment impact assessment. And we are talking about a massive... Uh, an increase in the in in the activities there in the extraction there um, over a very long long time, twenty five years. And what about um, the in first terms well of was the actually drilled there in two thousand and fourteen? And in terms um, so of the profit, sorry, UK Oil and Gas are saying it will give six percent of its profits to the local area. That's potentially a million pounds a year. Do you think that would do anything to reassure local residents? That and that is in addition to the business tax as well. Well, I don't know. I mean, how, you know, what's what's the point of getting any extra funding if you can't drink the water that's coming out of your tap? And that is something I have seen personally in Pennsylvania, where um, you get entire families having to rely on water being imported by the gas companies. Um, and, you know, the, you know that, that's a fracking activity. But, in fact, the same technology, the same technology is being used in acidization. So, really, you've actually got to... You've got to think about well, who's going to benefit from but, this. So that's in Pennsylvania. It is going to be the oil what's, company. What's the evidence, though, that you have that UK oil production has harmed water supplies? We're not talking about the United States. What, what evidence have you got from the UK well, that you oil just production has harmed? What evidence is there of any risk? And I have told you firsthand, I have seen the risk being badly realised in America. Um, and if you listen to what Mr. Sanderson ambition is, he is saying he aspires for back-to-back -back wells across the wheeled. So what part of that is a reassurance to the community that he's impacting? No, uh, None whatsoever. UK Oil and Gas says that oil composites are used on turbines, which are used for wind power. A lot of the components for electric cars are made using oil products. So if that is the case, even if we do use more renewables, we are still going to need oil, aren't we? What we have to do, we have to, instead of um, pumping up this um, old-fashioned damaging fuel, uh, fossil fuel, we need to uh, develop our... Uh, renewable energy uh, sector uh, to find solutions. I mean, you know, we, we <laughs> the International Panel of Climate Change have told us that we've got 12 years um, to actually limit our uh, fossil fuel uh, use and to reduce um, carbon emissions. Otherwise, we're going to go um, over the edge uh, uh, on a catastrophic climate change. And that's what we're hearing from climate change campaigners. But Sorry. Then I, uh, that's exactly what we're hearing from climate change campaigners. But then when you've got Surrey County Council saying they'd only be able to reject any applications on planning grounds and the government is happy for oil companies to do their work so long as they're acting within the law, at the moment there doesn't seem to be the political will to make the changes that, you're, that you want. Yeah, you and I are talking. I think that's uh, an indication of the political will. And what we have to do is to get more people listening. And to that end, I would entreat your listeners, if they care about 
uh, what's going to happen in their community, which I'm sure they do, is to actually make a response uh, to the planning consultation uh, to Surrey County Council. And you do that by looking on the Surrey County Council website, um, Minerals Waste Planning uh, section, um, and search for Horse Hill. Uh, and then you can actually make a representation. And it's incredibly important that people do that. And if you wanted any, if your listeners wanted any, any ideas for making that representation, you, my website is um, keithtaylormep.org.uk. KeithTaylorMEP.org.uk. They can get in touch with you directly there. Thank you so much for your time, Keith Taylor, who's the Green MEP for Surrey.